Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to Joyful Living. Today, we are gonna be talking health and fitness, specifically health and fitness in middle age. I hope you find it encouraging on your own journey. I'm gonna share a little bit about my eating habits right now, how I am maintaining my weight in middle age, which by the way is not easy. And yeah, I'm just really glad that you're here. So we're gonna cover a few big kind of rocks in the jar today. We're gonna talk about diet and intermittent fasting. We're gonna talk about my current exercise routine, why I am no longer running long distances and, and, and that whole thing. And we're also gonna talk about the concept of just being kind to ourselves. I think a lot of times, especially because it's January as I'm filming this, and we talk a lot about new year, new you, and I'm gonna lose 10 pounds in 2022 and all of these new year's resolutions. And I think in all of that, we forget that the most important thing we can do for our health and our fitness and our well-being is to be incredibly kind to ourselves. So I'm going to talk about what that means to me. But let's talk about the thing that I probably get asked about the most. You guys ask me about it on Instagram. You reach out and ask me about it on Twitter. You'll leave comments. And that is my experience with intermittent fasting. Now, I have been practicing intermittent fasting now for... I wanna say going on two years, I'd have to go back and look at my other videos on it, but you can definitely go and watch the videos I've done before on it. It might've only been like 18 months. Um, but I have really found intermittent fasting to be kind of the key to maintaining my weight in middle age. Um, it, it has really just kind of transformed the way that I view food. I'm no longer doing any kind of deprivation. Um, the way that I do intermittent fasting is my eating window is from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. I usually have like a big brunch around 11. I have a snack in the afternoon and then I have an early dinner. Now, it is not meant to be something that causes deprivation. And if you have any kind of history of any kind of eating disorder or anything like that, I just wanna say, full disclaimer, this may not be for you. I would definitely talk with your healthcare professional. If you have a counselor, I would talk it through with them. For me though, um, I'm a girl who likes large portions. I like to eat and I get very, very hungry. So always having to tell myself not to eat until I was full was really never going to work for me. But intermittent fasting has allowed me to pretty much eat what I want um, within reason. I still can't be ridiculous. And I do have about five pounds I need to lose right now from the holidays, but it just allows me to not think about food. It allows me to eat when I'm hungry, eat until I'm full. And the only thing I really have to think about is that I'm not gonna eat before 11 and I'm not gonna eat after seven. Now, a lot of you have asked me about coffee and yes, your girl has coffee every single morning with milk and a little bit of sweetener. So does that technically not count? Maybe, nonetheless, I'm, I'm a big proponent of do how it works for you, not what the plan calls for. And this has worked for me the entire time I've been doing it. And it's really done a great job of keeping my weight in check and I have not had that you know big shock of getting on the scale in fact I just got on the scale this morning I don't weigh myself regularly anymore I really go by how my clothes fit and I was happily surprised that I had only put on a few pounds over the holidays just kind of typical from a little bit too much celebrating no regrets at all um, but yeah intermittent fasting just allows me to just kind of get right back into it and get back on track and so far, I have just been thrilled with it. So highly recommend intermittent fasting. Definitely look into it. Definitely talk to a nutritionist, which I am not. Definitely talk to your healthcare provider. I did have a conversation with my doctor about it, and she was very clear that the only thing she was concerned about with me, because I do exercise 45 minutes to an hour almost every day, was that I make sure that I'm getting enough protein because I'm also a pescatarian, so I'm a vegetarian who eats very little fish. I would say I eat fish maybe once a month, so I'm predominantly a vegetarian. So her concern was that I really watch my protein intake, which does get more important as we move into menopause, and also that I was consuming enough calories. So um, I've kept an eye on that, and it has really, like, just, I, I can't even tell you guys, it has really transformed 
how I feel. It has helped with my digestion. It has been fantastic. So definitely do your own research and then try it. And if it doesn't work for you, I think it, it's not right for everyone, but it has definitely been amazing for me. So five out of five stars for intermittent fasting. I'm also not super strict with it, say when I travel or over the holidays and things like that. Um, I, I'm kind of more of it exists for me. I don't exist for it. So if on any given day, if we have plans with friends, that maybe we're out a little bit later. If maybe I wake up one morning and I'm like ravenously hungry, your girl is not about self-deprivation. I don't play that way. It, it doesn't it doesn't help me in any way. It is not supportive for me on my own personal journey. So if I'm starving, I will absolutely break my rules. So it's more just kind of a general guideline for how I eat as opposed to this like really strict fastidious program. Having said that, now that I do have a few pounds I wanna lose for the holidays, I'm kind of getting back on track. I'm doing it in a little bit more structured way, maybe watching the calories a little bit more, but again, I'm not counting calories and I really eat intuitively. I eat what I feel like eating and I eat what I want when I want, as long as it's in between that 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. window. So that's just how it has worked for me. All right, now in the second part of this video, I wanna talk about running and run Disney. And the first thing I wanna say is huge congratulations to all of my friends that completed races over Marathon Weekend. I had so many friends that ran the marathon for the first time, so many friends that did Dopey and Goofy and the 5K or the 10K or the half marathon. You guys are all amazing rock stars. I loved watching all of your footage on Instagram and YouTube and all of that. So let me just say how much Run Disney still has my heart. Having said that, I am no longer running. And um, that is for a couple of different reasons. The first one being, a lot of you know, I have autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. And I have found that excessive exercise, specifically running really long distances, really intense workouts, like I did Orange Theory for a while, any kind of like really, really intense exercise, does not help with my autoimmune disease. In fact, it actually causes some joint inflammation and it, it just, for me, um, intense exercise, also it has to do with women in middle age. Sometimes intense exercise can cause us to actually gain belly fat, which is not a good thing. And it's something to do with our estrogen levels and things like that, but you can actually exercise to uh, excess in middle age and it will backfire on you and it will actually cause you to gain weight, not lose weight. So I didn't love that. But also it just wasn't helping me balance out my autoimmune disease. Now, the second reason that I'm not running anymore has to do with my right knee. I have hereditary osteoarthritis and I had an MRI um, about a year and a half ago and I do have stage four arthritis in my right knee, which means basically there is no cartilage. Now, my orthopedic surgeon was very supportive of running. He was very clear, you can absolutely run. You're not gonna make anything any worse, but you may find that it is a pain and function issue. And I can tell you that when I started to train again to run, because I had originally planned on running the 10K uh, that just happened down at Walt Disney World, um, I felt good, but once I got past three miles, I really found that the next day, my knee would catch and give out on me. And I may very well have a knee replacement in my future, but I would love to keep that from happening as long as possible. And I find that if I just exercise in the other ways that I'm gonna talk about in a minute, I don't have that inflammation and pain in my right knee, and I can actually walk and function and be very active and do all of the things. So for me at 51, the goal is to stay very, very active, but that will no longer be through running. So if you are a runner, if you are one of the many people that has reached out to me and told me how much my running videos have inspired you, yes, I have run four full marathons and dozens of half marathons. I love running. I love the running community. If you've never run before, you 
absolutely can train and run and I hope that you will. Um, I, I just, it is no longer something that will be for me, but I will be cheering all of you on and I'm just so happy and proud of all of you on your own individual journey. So what am I doing instead for fitness? So many different things. And um, I actually am loving just movement right now. Um, I do walk about 45 minutes a day, sometimes up to an hour. I now use the rowing machine three to four times a week. Um, I am on Apple Fitness Plus and I adore their uh, rowing workouts. So much fun. Uh, Josh and Anja over there, if you've never used their rowing workouts, um, if you belong to a gym, most gyms have a rowing machine. Um, you do a 30 minute rowing workout and that is, is something else. So again, I have to be really careful that I don't do exercise that's too intense. So I only do that two to three times a week. I do ballet. If you haven't watched my video about how I rediscovered my love of ballet as an adult, that has been amazing. Um, and so I also do yoga. I do some dance workouts. Just basically every single day, I try to move for 45 minutes to an hour. And I have found that that is the best balance for me. It helps with my energy, it helps obviously with weight control, and it helps keep my muscles strong. As we get into menopause, bone loss is a very big deal, and doing some kind of exercises to build strength and also for balance, and ballet has really helped me with that. Um, just moving my body, and not always in the same way every day, and I kind of just have this long list of different fitness exercises I can do depending on the weather, depending on my attitude, depending on on all those different things. If I'm really stressed out, then it's going to be ballet or yoga. If I have a lot of energy, then it maybe it's going to be a rowing workout. And then every single day, making sure that I am walking. If you ever read any biographies or articles or watch videos about any of the people that we have really admired that have lived well into their 80s and 90s, including Queen Elizabeth, including Betty White, rest in peace. I am already so sad that she's not here anymore, but she lived a very vibrant life and she was one that would tell you that walking was a very big deal for her, as was her love of animals. So I feel like I've got both of those things going on. Um, Queen Elizabeth has been an avid walker her entire life. I really think if you do nothing else, getting outside if you can, weather permitting, and walking every single day kind of is like the secret key to longevity. Like if we can just keep moving our bodies in productive ways. But then also you want to really focus on strength training and balance because those are the things as we age that just keep us upright, keep us moving. And having seen people in my family age poorly um, due to the fact that they just stopped moving their bodies, I'm very determined to stay extremely active as I move into later years of my life. And so, um, yeah, all the different kinds of exercise. Also swimming, not this time of year, because I don't know about y'all, but we have an indoor pool at our gym, which I love. But when it's 35 degrees outside, I just cannot bring myself to get into the cold water. Even though it's indoors, I, it's, I think it's a psychological thing that I probably should get over because I'm an avid swimmer and I love swimming, but it's more of a spring and summer thing for me. So basically, I'm just moving, intermittent fasting, and lots and lots and lots of moving my body. And then lastly, I want to talk about something that I feel like in the midst of the pandemic and everything that we've all been through with personal stress and work stress and kids stress, I want to ask, are you being kind to yourself? Uh, yesterday, I was on my walk and I was listening to the Time to Walk on Apple Fitness and it was Rebel Wilson and she was talking about her one hour of walking every day and that that's really all she did to lose all of the weight that she lost. But she used the words frequently throughout the, the you know 30 minute podcast that that was the way that she could be kind to herself. And I think we talk a lot about deprivation and sacrifice, especially when, you know, we want to be strong athletes and all of that. But how often do we talk about being kind to our bodies? And as I am 51, I want to make sure that I am always in a mindset of kindness to myself and to my body. This body has been through 
a lot and it has carried me through a lot and I want to make sure I am being as good to her as physically and humanly possible. That includes making sure I'm drinking enough water. That includes making sure I'm getting enough sleep. That includes really working on my own stress levels. I've mentioned to you guys in my last day in the life video that I'm going through again um, the daily stoic and really studying stoicism and how much that is helping me manage my stress. Really checking myself, how much social media am I consuming and how good is that for me? A lot of you know I used to be on Instagram pretty much every day. I'm now on there very sporadically and it has really helped me with my mental health. Now, I'm not saying that that's maybe what you need to do. Maybe for you, it's, it's you know, you need to consume less news. I will tell you, I have way cut down on my news consumption. There was a time where I was watching the news multiple times per day. Now I maybe check it once a day and um, I had a really great driver recently down at Walt Disney World, Manny, and he's, he, there's a company that I always use and Manny is one of the regular drivers and um, it's Orlando Transportation by Mike, not sponsored, but he was telling me that he relies on his friends to tell him if there's some major emergency that he needs to do something about and other than that he just doesn't watch the news because his dad was an avid consumer of the news and he watched his dad always be so stressed out about the news and I thought I don't want to do that. I want to be informed enough that I can vote, that I can make good choices, but but I don't need to be consumed with it. And it really is that serenity prayer idea of not being upset about things that I can't do anything about and really putting my energies towards things that I can control. So all of that for me is part of my own personal kindness. It has to do with working through, you know, my own mental health issues. I do struggle with anxiety and depression. I've been very open about that. Journaling, I have started doing in the evenings um, a process of reviewing my days where I go through and write down where I saw, you know, God show up, where I felt connected to myself and to the world around me. All of these little things, they're not self-help, they're kindnesses. They are really me realigning myself with the truth of who I am. And it is such an important piece of my well-being. So I hope this was helpful today, not because I want to put the attention on me, but I hope it helps you to understand how much work really goes into being good to your own mind, body, and spirit, especially as we get into middle age, but really any time in your life. So if you're watching this and you're in your 20s or you're in your 40s or 50s or 70s or 80s or any of those ages in between, whether you're a man or a woman, being kind to yourself feeding your body well, moving your body well. I think these are the things that bring us well-being and ultimately joy. So whatever you're doing today, I hope you're finding joy. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you'll give this video a big thumbs up. And I just so appreciate each and every one of you. Be really good to each other. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.